Hello and welcome to ArchitEasy. As architects, we sometimes use wooden structural columns in Revit, but they look pretty simple, they have no nice planes or capitals, and as architects, we really miss them. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you exactly that. Actually, I'm going to teach you how you can create a very nice planes for your wooden structural columns in Revit. But before I move to the topic, if you're serious about learning Revit, I would like to invite you to join our community of architects. It's free to join and we also have free Revit training there. You can find the link in the video description. I have a Revit project open and I will just go here to the structure tab. Let's see which columns do we have. Okay, we have no any wooden columns. So I will go to insert tab and then I will load one from Autodesk families. So here I will just go to the structural columns and then I can just take this one, glue lamp, southern pine. Let's load this one and it doesn't matter. I can just load any of those types, just first one. So I will just go here to the structure column and then I'm going to place this one. So I'll just place it here. We see this one and then I will go to the edit family and then I'm going to open this family. So then I will just open, let's say the front view and then the plan view. And as you can see here in a, in a plan view, or if I just go to project, let me just open the 3D view of the project. So I have 3D view of the project, then I have plan view. And then if you just look here, so you see project tree, and then I have this glue lamp, a uh, Southern pine. So this is RFA, this is family where this is project file. So here in this 3D, I will just turn off those, I can turn off everything of annotation category so we can just see our column better. And when I go to the family, you see that we just have a wooden column. I mean, you can see that in a, in a product file as well. So what I would like to add here is some kind of the base, the postament. So I would like to, let's say, have some kind of the steel part here which goes like this, which means then that my column will be moved from here to here. And I'm going to make it. So what I would like to do now is to create a new family. I'm not going to do everything inside this family. And for that purpose, I will just go here to file new, new family, and I can start doing this as metric generic. So I will use this metric generic model as a template. And the first thing in this plane view for this family, what I'm going to do will be to create a couple of more reference planes. RP is a shortcut or so just go here, reference plane, and then I'm just going to make it like this. And after that, I will go to annotate, we'll take this align dimension, the I is a shortcut, and then I'm gonna create equal constraint for them. And after that, I will just place dimensions like this because I would like to determine what is the width and the depth of this profile. So I will create parameter out of this. So select the dimension, go to this small create parameter box. And then this one is going to be called as B. Click OK. This one I'm going to create as D. Click OK. And then we'll go to the front view. So in the front view, I'm going to create a couple of more reference planes. As I said, RP is a shortcut. So I made, I made them like this. Actually, I don't need this one for now. I can just skip it. And this one here, I can just name as O1. This one is O2. And then this one I'm going to name as O3. I will go to DI or just to annotate align dimension. And then I'm going to align it to here and then I'm going to make this, let's say, as a base, 
and I'm also going to, in this case, from this top one to this bottom one, and I'm going to make it like this. Let's select one of those dimensions, go here, and then I will create parameter T, and this one should be T as well. I don't need to create it because I have, I made it, so it's T as well. And then this one is something I'm going to call as, let's say, base. Click OK. And right now, what I can do just to check if everything works well, I will just go here to the plan view. And then I can in plan view, let's just go cancel, let's move it here so we see what we're doing. I will in plan view make base to be 200, like uh, may, let's make D to be 400, so you see that it works. And let's go to the front view. And in this case, I can just go here and I'm going to make T as, let's say, 10 millimeters and then base as 300. Click OK. And I will go to the reference plane for this family I'm working on. And then I will go to create extrusion and then I will just start picking. So I will just pick this one and then I'm going to lock it. Then this one here. It's quite important that you lock your lines over the reference planes. Go to trim tool here and make this to be closed loop. Now I will just go to front. We'll click finish edit mode and then I'm going to drag this one and I'm going to lock it to this reference plane. And now if I, for example, go here and if I increase this thickness on 20, you see that it follows. And just remember that the name of this one is 01. So again, I will go here and I will go to create extrusion. But in this case, the work plane is going to be reference plane 01. And I'm going to make the circle here. Let's say the 40s radius. Select this one. Click on this dimension and then select dimension. And I'm going to make parameter of it, which is called radius. So it's just air. Let's go to front and then finish edit mode, drag it to here, lock it. And we need to create one more. So in this case, I can do two more things. I will just, let's say, create something like this. I will create two more reference planes here. So the first one, dimension like this, from here to here. And then I'm going to select those two dimensions and I will assign them parameter T. And I will select this reference plane and then I'm going to name it as a top. And also what I'm going to do, you remember that I created reference plane, but I deleted that one. So I will just go here. I will just create one more reference plane like this. I don't need to name it right now. But what I'm going to do is... Let's just go here. What I need to, to do is to be able to see those reference planes in our front view. So I just dragging uh, them down. Now they are visible. And I will go here to create extrusion. So for from a front view, for a work plane, I will pick our top. And then I will just select this one. Then I will take split. SL is a shortcut, and then just continue clicking and locking over reference planes. When you are done with picking and locking, take trim tool and then make this as a closed loop. And then go to plan view, click finish edit mode and simply take this blue arrow and drag it to this reference plane. So now I will just go here to the view. And what I can do right now is to go here to family types. And let's see how it's going to look if I make this as, let's say, 150 base, 150 radius, 15 thickness, 10. And then let's make this 300 
Okay, so I made a problem with radius. It should be 15. Now it's fine. And then what I need to do as well here, what I forgot to do, is to go to front. You see that I didn't give parameter, didn't give parameter to this one. And then this one I would like to call as height extension. And let's go to 3D. So now if I click and see height extension, I can make it to 50, for example. So you see that it works. So let's just make this to 100 and then this one radius on 20. And let's make this 140, 100, like this, maybe 150. And thickness, I forgot to change this one to see. Okay, so this works well. And the last thing, I just need to increase this base to 150. The last thing is to select all of them and then go here to material, but I'm not going to assign the material. I'm going to click here to associate family parameter and then I'm going to give them a parameter which is called material. Let's click OK. And then I'm going to save this family. You see what is the name of the family? 0104 base 02. And then I'm going to load this one into glue lamp Southern Pine, not into the project. And then I'm just going to place it somewhere like this. Take a line tool, go to this middle reference plane, lock it, and then to this one, to this one, lock it. And I will open 3D, uh, 3D view here. Actually, I will just go to the front view, sorry. And then I'm going to create one reference plane here. I'm going to name that reference plane as something. We are working in inches. This family was done in inches. So in this case, I will just go to UN shortcut and the length will change to be in millimeters. And this one I will create to be as, let's say, base, base height. So now I'm going to select our family, which I nested into the Glulam Southern Pine family. Let's go here to edit type. And then you see that we have this base 150. So I can just click on this one and then I can assign this base height to that one. Let's click apply. And then you see how it works also if I go to B, I can go and assign B parameter of glue lamp pine and then for D do the same. Let's click apply, you see how it follows. Then for height extension, I can create new parameter. I can just make it as a height extension. Then I can make this as a base radius and then this one could be for example base thickness let's click ok and let's go to 3d here so one more thing is missing for this one i just need to go here to edit type and then i need to create parameter for material and then it's going to be called as base material so most of the things here are settled, but what I didn't fix is the column itself. So I will go to fr front view. I'm going to select this column and then I'm just going to drag this one to this reference plane or just to here. Let's remove constraint, take a line tool and align it and just lock it. So now when I go to 3D, we need to check if everything works well. So let's go here to family types and then I'm going to make this, for example, base height to 150. So you see that it follows. Then we have this base radius to 15. So this is fine. Base thickness, let's say 10 works well. Height extension 150 or let's say 100 
or let's say 75. And then we have B as let's say 100, D as 200. So everything works well. What I can just do, I can maybe just go and leave this up, B and D, because they are the most important parameters. Let's click OK. And then I'm just going to load this one into the project. I will override this one. And then you see how it looks like. And for example, here, I can just go to realistic. And you see that we have material for our column, but not for a base. So if I select base, actually, if I select the column and if I go to edit type, now I can assign material to the base and I will take some of the project materials. And in this case, let's see which kind of steel or iron do we have here. I can just take this colored one. So let's see how it's going to look like. So you see, and also what's important, if I select column and go to edit type, I can even in a project do the changes. So for example, I can just make this to be 140 by 250, then base height to 200, base radius to 25, thickness to 7, height extension to 100, click apply, and then you see how it works. Please keep in mind that I also created longer version of this video. This one, as well as all our other YouTube tutorials, all ad-free, plus its project files and extended versions for some of them, you can access for only $12 per month. And on that way, you will not be only supporting us to create better content more often, but you can also get way more in return. You will also get access to live recordings we had in our private community, then to tips and tricks we are sharing with our students, as well as to one-on-one -on -one coach call with me after some period, Revit beginner course, and all upcoming workshops. Access link to our premium group is in a video description as well.